Am I the a-hole for telling my ex his lack of money is not my issue? Original post. I, 36 female, have a daughter, Sadie, 12, with my ex-husband, John, 39. We got divorced five years ago and I have primary custody while he sees her two weekends a month. Last year, he got married to Amanda who has sole custody of her kids, 10 and 8 female, from a previous marriage. Amanda's a stay-at-home mom, not for any health reasons or so on, she just doesn't want to work, while John works at a 9 to 5. He makes good money to support them but not enough to live in luxury. I have a much higher paying job. Since it's just me and Sadie, I make sure she has the best possible life. She goes to a private school, set her up a college fund, and she has much better things than most kids, phone, clothes, etc. I still managed to raise her to be humble and not take things for granted, and she's one of the hardest working people I know, always making sure to get good grades and keep her room tidy. Well, the last few times she came back after a weekend at John's, I noticed that the clothes she was bringing back in her duffel are A, not her size, and B, much cheaper and poorer quality than what I usually buy for her. I asked her why that is, and she told me that while she's at her dad's, Amanda takes away her nice clothes and gives them to her kids, while Sadie gets the clothes they buy from Target. I asked her if she wanted them back, but she said she didn't mind sharing since all her favorite clothes were kept here. The problem came when I went to pick her up last weekend. I had a business meeting and couldn't drive her over, so Amanda offered to just pick Sadie up from school, which hadn't happened before. When I got there on Sunday, John and Amanda asked me to sit down with them, and when Sadie came to hug me, Amanda sent her to her room quite harshly, saying her punishment wasn't over yet. I was confused because Sadie very rarely misbehaves. They sat me down in the kitchen and said that it was unfair for Sadie to be going to a private school while her kids go to a public one, so they decided that Sadie would be pulled out of private school and put in the same school as the girls. They also said I should keep up Sadie's punishment, because when they told her she blew up at them, told them it wasn't fair, and yelled at Amanda and her kids weren't even her real family, that all they did was steal. I told them in no uncertain terms to buzz off. I would not be pulling my child out of a school she likes, away from her friends just because they can't afford it. I told them they could easily make as much money as me if Amanda started working in her field because she has the qualifications, and the job market is very good. I told them their money problems are not my issue, and if Sadie's items get stolen again or they try to pull her out of school, I'll be taking this to court. They've been blowing up my phone ever since, calling me a selfish a-hole, and after telling the story to a friend, he told me I was rubbing my success in their face, but I still don't feel like I did anything wrong. Still, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. And I would make the school aware that any decisions about your daughter need to go through you, so he doesn't just do it behind your back. First thing I did after dropping Sadie off at school, my kid's not losing a good opportunity because of them. Her father is weak, and all around pretty terrible for trying to take away these opportunities from your daughter. I say yours because he is hardly acting like she is his at the moment. I'd be having a good talk with your daughter about any other toxic ways she's being treated at their house. Get the courts involved regardless for stealing and trying to alienate your daughter. In the meantime, Opie and daughter could make a game out of this. Take daughter thrift shopping for dad's weekend clothes. Things that are okay but not stepmom jealous fancy. Clothes that daughter likes and fits but stepmom is not likely to steal. Hi, I think as a loving mother you know the answer deep down in your heart. Not day home and well done for protecting your daughter. Keep this mama bear mood switched on. Out of all adults involved, you're the only one fighting your kid's corner. Your daughter really needs your support in this situation. The only thing that I would have done differently is I'd have taken them to court already for stolen clothes. You let it go, and now it keeps escalating, because the real motive here is intense jealousy, combined with laziness and questionable morality. To steal clothes instead of working? Meh, that makes me want to vomit. These people are adults and won't change, so reasoning with them is not a viable option. I would involve child protection service to start with, because stealing clothes and pulling your daughter out of school against her will and without consulting her mother is abuse. Please report it or your child will get more of the same. Also, I'm not sure if your daughter benefits from seeing her father. Even during the short time they're together, he manages to mistreat her. It's another thing to discuss with child protection. I would do it without warning and any previous talks with her dad or Amanda, so that they wouldn't be able to prepare on how to dodge it. What you're describing is serious and it's time to take an action. Good luck and please take good care of yourself.
Your lovely daughter needs your help right now. Thank you so much for your comment. I'm really considering that, but haven't done it up until now because I didn't want to ruin Sadie's relationship with her father. As it is, she's decided she doesn't want to go back, so I'm gonna take quite a lot of pleasure in getting my revenge for what they did to her. Best of luck to you. I'm glad your daughter won't be exposed to any more of it. I don't know how it works where you live. Can your ex take you to court for withholding his daughter from him, or if she's old enough to decide for herself? He can take me to court if she doesn't go, and she can only make choices about her living situation at 16. But I'm planning on contacting my lawyer ASAP to at least start the process of getting the sole custody before her next visit, then hopefully I can keep her with me until the decision's final. Now for the first update. I got temporary guardianship while waiting for a court hearing. We're going to try to get full custody and have John get one day a week of visitation, supervised for at least the first few months and no contact with Amanda or her kids. This way, he still sees Sadie just as much and they can try to repair their relationship, but she doesn't have to go back there. All contact between us is made through emails which are cc'd by my lawyer, and I've asked for Sadie's things back. I've talked to Sadie, and we've decided that she's going to try therapy for a little while to help deal with everything that's happened. Update 2. We've had a hearing and our custody arrangements been modified. Any and all decisions relating to Sadie are made by me and me alone. John has supervised visitation once a week and Sadie will continue in therapy to deal with all the issues Amanda and company have caused her. They tried to push for 50-50 custody split on grounds of alienation, as in me trying to put Sadie against her father. But we made it clear from the start that we wanted to keep Amanda and her children away and wanted supervision only because we don't feel safe leaving him alone as of yet, but that we were open to modifications. Thanks to that, the proof of stealing and Sadie's therapist's testimony, their claim was thrown out pretty quickly. Amanda's angry and has tried to contact me and Sadie, but I made it clear to her that if she keeps harassing me or my daughter, I'll have to make this known to the authorities. Sadie and I have blocked her everywhere, and any communication between John and us is made through text messages or emails only. I'd like to thank you all for your support throughout all of this. It really means a lot to us. Sending you loads of love. Definitely not the a-hole. Info. Did you and your friend have words and did you tell him where to go? He tried talking to me. I told him I'd rather our relationship be professional from then on. So he called me a witch because I couldn't deal with people's opinions. Jokes on him because the firm's managing partner was walking by and heard the name calling. He got himself a trip to HR and will no longer be working with me. They sat me down in the kitchen and said that it was unfair for Sadie to be going to a private school while her kids go to a public one. Literally took, if my girls can't have it, nobody can, to another level. So they decided that Sadie would be pulled out of private school and put in the same school as the girls. The sheer audacity to be making decisions about the life of a kid they are barely involved with. I suddenly remembered a poster who, along with her husband, saved for a trip to Paris for herself, her daughter and hubby. Her ex said that they should bring her daughter's stepsister or else it wasn't fair for the daughter to go. Thankfully, that OP, though sympathetic to her ex's stepdaughter, realized this wasn't her problem. Money entitlement is funny. Oh, can I share my personal favorite? It was the one that was posted here of a dude that was with his girlfriend for four years, and her dad died leaving her a huge inheritance, and he was all pissy because she was managing her money like a mature adult, like selling an extra house and giving the money to her mom so she could live comfortably, and he was fighting her for not sharing it and asking him if he needed any of her inheritance. Then he recommended couples therapy then quit when the therapist and girlfriend ganged up on him. And when she finally broke up with him, he posted for advice on how to report her mom for tax fraud from the girlfriend helping out her mom. Dude was such a loser. I wouldn't even warn Amanda that I'd go to the authorities if she didn't stop harassing me. I'd go straight to the authorities and let them sort it out. These are not people you can compromise with. If they even perceive that Opie has given them an inch, they are going to demand the entire country. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being honest with my son that I am not proud of him? My wife Nina became pregnant with our son Jason when we were both 20. We will admit it was an unplanned pregnancy, but we loved our son and kept him. We did our best to raise Jason to be kind, respectful, and treat others well and we thought we succeeded. Jason worked hard to attend an elite university. Jason and his first wife Sarah had a daughter, Simone. Unfortunately, Sarah passed in a car accident before Simone's third birthday. 
Jason raised Simone until Simone was four. At that time, he met his second wife and moved two hours away, and Simone lived with us. Jason visits once every two months at best. He and his wife would stay for the day, buy Simone a present, then Jason would say it was time to leave. Nina and I suspect he only visits and buys Simone the presents because his wife makes him. His wife, Iris, is a lovely lady. She insists that Simone should move in with them or they should move closer to us because she wants to be Simone's stepmom and spend time with her. But Jason shuts the idea down because he says Simone moving in or them moving would hurt his career and it is best Simone stay with Nina and me. Simone is 11 now and she adores Jason. She makes drawings and cards for him, constantly bakes treats to send him. It is devastating for her because her dad is her hero and he does not want to spend time with her. Her birthday was in July, and she cried when Jason did not call her to wish her a happy birthday. Iris tried lying to Simone to make her feel better that the phone lines went down, and Jason did not forget, but Simone did not believe her. Simone is at summer camp all this week, and Jason invited us to a party to celebrate receiving a promotion. During the party, Jason told me about how much more money he makes with his promotion and his job title, and he asked, You should be proud, old man. Job title and an elite university alumni. I sighed and told Jason that I honestly have not been proud of him as of late. He may have a well-paying job, but he treats his own beautiful daughter as if she doesn't matter. Simone is his own little girl. She loves him so much and he doesn't even seem to care. Nina came back with drinks and Jason told her what I said. Nina told him that she agreed with me and he does not treat Simone right. Most of the family says that I and Nina were in the wrong to tell Jason I was not proud of him. They said I should know how much that statement hurts at any age, because I was never good enough in my own father's eyes. They said that Jason is probably focusing on stabilizing his career and Simone can move in with them after. They also said Jason's own promotional party was not the time or place to call him out. And I could have just congratulated Jason on working hard and saved the drama for another day. I feel what I said needed to be said, but most of the family's disagreeing with Nina and me. Am I the a-hole? As many people have asked, Jason does pay for child support, and he believes because he pays child support that his responsibilities have been met. Jason told us he was attending therapy in the beginning, but we learned later he was being untruthful about it. Simone sees a child psychologist, but she seems to talk to the psychologist more about school and friends rather than Jason. Many of the comments have also suggested that Simone could resemble Sarah and cause too many bad memories for Jason. That could be possible, but Simone does not resemble Sarah at all. Simone looks like a young version of Nina with lighter skin and slightly thicker hair. The issue seems to be that Jason does not want to be a parent to Simone. Now for the top comments. You told a well-deserved truth. And if that makes him upset, then he can go sit in syrup. I'm proud of you. Not today, whole. He stopped being a real dad when she was four. Now he's 11. So he had seven years to stabilize his career. And he doesn't even want to go to therapy. I lost someone close to me, and to me it looks like he chose to forget that part of his life after his wife died, instead of dealing with it. That is why he is such a bad father. His daughter is a reminder of what could have been and what he lost, so he cuts her off. He is harming himself and his child, and sets himself for a lot of family drama. Opie has his parent needs to give him a solid kick in the butt, so he starts going to therapy. Not today, Hall. When you are raising your grandchild, Oh boy, do you get to have all the opinions in the world regarding your kid. Yep. As for all those saying how much those words hurt coming from a parent, just wait until your kid wants no more to do with you, because you left her behind when she needed you most. Not today, Hall. He has abandoned his child, physically and spiritually, for the last seven years. He's not just the a-hole in this situation, he's an a-hole to the core. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for still having my daughter's first birthday party? Okay, here's the background. My 24 female friend, 24 female, and I gave birth on the same day. Her due date was supposed to be two months later, but her baby came early. We were both so excited. Unfortunately, six months ago, her baby passed on. I cannot begin to imagine her pain. I have tried to be there for her as best as I could, but she just wants to be left alone most of the time, which I understand. Now on to the issue. My daughter's birthday is coming up in September and we plan to invite close friends and family to her birthday party. I texted her before the invites were sent out, saying, I wanted to let you know my daughter's birthday party is on this date and I just wanted to let you know you're invited. No pressure on you to come at all. She texted me back saying, Oh no, thanks. I'll be at my daughter's grave that day. 
You know, the one that will never have a first birthday? Buzz off. She told our other friends how angry she is at me for even inviting her, and that is awful that I'm still celebrating this day. And they kind of see her side, saying I could have been more sensitive. My husband doesn't think I did anything wrong and is just grief talking. Am I the a-hole for inviting her? Honestly, I feel you were screwed either way. If you didn't invite her, your friends and her probably would have thought you were being presumptuous by making the decision for her. You messaging her personally, so she wouldn't get blindsided by an invitation, was likely the right call unless she, or someone else, has talked to you about keeping a distance. If your friends mentioned it, ask what you could have done to be more sensitive. If they have better ideas, use them. Not day Hall. I agree with your husband that this is grief talking. I can't imagine how angry I'd be at a world in her shoes, let alone the extra torture of watching a friend go through the milestones I'd never get to see. Yes, I feel horrible for the friend. I can't bring myself to call her an a-hole because if we're all being totally honest, I'm not sure many of us would have been civil with Opie, given the circumstances. I agree that Opie was probably in a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. But I'm sure Opie's invite for the friend to come to her kid's birthday party while said friend is mourning her own daughter 